and it's the first time I've also seen this funny wire mesh in here. It's actually not it's not wire mesh, it's plastic. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, you can tell that that wing cord was definitely, definitely chosen on purpose. So we got, that's a big nose on this one. Hands up, guilty as charged. In the interim, I've stuck quite a fast motor on the back of it and we really are gonna go and rag its nuts around the sky. Very, very curious. I've never seen this mesh system before and I gotta admit, I do like it. You always learn something new when you have a new model on a desk. Howdy, I'm Matt, and it's a foam day! My favourite day of the week. Okay, we have the LTE Rambler, and before we go any further, I just need to give you a heads up. I explicitly went to Banggood and specifically asked for this model because I was so curious. So with that in mind, let's just get straight in here and take a look. Now there is a little bit of contrast, and you'll understand why I'm, I've been so curious, is because there's a little bit of controversy around this model, which is the chap who designed it apparently worked for Zoe HD. Now if you don't know Zoe HD, they might models like the Dart 250, the Drift, the, Tal the Nano Talon, uh, and a collection of other very cool models and apparently this guy was one of the guys which created okay, if I grab this one the Dart 250G and I've got to be completely honest with you I think that's an absolutely amazing model uh, hence why it's got the Matt Zoe HD tag on the side with silver now this is the curiosity the chap left Zoe HD Sonic Model is the other company name which you may know by it uh, and Sonic Model also make a lot of other models for several other companies which we shouldn't know about. Anyway, getting back to my point, that's why it's been in, made a little bit of controversy because this model is designed by an ex-employee of Sonic Model. And by all accounts, it's pretty damn good. And I really want to get in this box, so let's get in here and take a closer look. So, this took approximately eight days from the time of order to the time of arrival to, hit to myself here in the UK. Uh, so we are getting over that funny virus thing and it's not making too much of an impact on delivery now, which is obviously a good thing. Right, this is where we start seeing some good stuff. How many times have you been and bought a model and it's all been in extra, extra kit form because they couldn't be bothered to pack it right. So that's immediately a good sign, is that we've got stuff which is double box. So let's get in here uh, and take a closer look. Now, what do I know about this? That's as much as I know. Ooh, we get stickers. Ooh, do, is it a cat? I've got a miniature schnauzer and that looks like a very angry miniature schnauzer. I'm not entirely sure if it's supposed to be a cat, wolf or what. I do like the eyes, I think they're pretty cool. And I love Do Not Touch stickers as well. Anyway, let's put them to the side. We have some instructions. Yeah, we'll, we'll read those later, of course. Anyway, uh, my point was being double boxed on everything is always, always a good sign. Something which many other companies could learn from, shall we say. Is that keeping it PC? Right, that's it for that box. Uh, oh, did get a bit squashed. It happens, and that's why we like double box stuff, so it tries half the text to kit, which we've been and bought. And is there anything else in here? Oh, bag of air, right. Okay, let's get straight in here. So again, nice to see that we have double bagged, sorry, double boxed and some bubble foam. We've got one fin here. Oh, that must be the rear fin. Oh, I'm really curious on the rear hatch on this one, just to see what they've been and done for that. Right, immediately I know that this is EPP foam just by looking at it, uh, which is, by the way, generally speaking, you would want EPP over EPO. It is beautifully molded. It is, yeah. It's not as bad as what we would know as the older Micro Sky Hunter. Those little models were absolutely rinsed in mold release. This one's, you can feel it in there. It's very slippery. 
So what I was going to say, what, just that first observation is that if you're putting stickers on here or laminate, you might want to run over some denatured alcohol on top of it just to get it's it's there, but it's not. If that makes sense, it's a it's well. <laughs> Actually, thinking about it logically, it's a brand, brand, brand new mould. So that's probably why it's feeling so shiny, is it? Yeah, there is mould release on here, but yeah, I'd still run some neat denatured alcohol over the top of it if you were going to go on and laminate this model. So uh, first observation in there is the foam moulding quality is very, very good. And you can actually tell that whoever pulled that out of the mould pulled it out on an angle because we're supposed to put some fins in here and that's actually got a dent down the side so when they pulled it out they must have pulled it out like that instead of coming straight out the mould they must have pulled it out like that anyway let's move on it's a minor detail also one meter wingspan there's a, a note on their website that apparently someone got something like 193 minutes worth of flight time uh, out of this model by loading it up with 6s and 18650 batteries which is absolutely insane uh, just looking around the model so on the side here we've got the main spot which goes through uh, we've got a hole which is not very well cut by the looks of it, oh actually no, I'm being very mean to it, there's a tiny like one millimetre sliver of foam which they didn't cut through in there, so that's been a bit harsh, that will go in a moment. Uh, nice to see the control horn surface in there is really well embedded uh, into the uh, Elevon surface, the Elevon surface is good. Uh, one immediate observation, given the choice we would normally like the Yes, uh, sorry, the servos mounted on the top of the wings, and the reason for that is that there's less for them to catch on the bottom of the model. That is why the designer put a nodule down here to protect the control horn. So that's given the choice, we would stick it on the. We'd have the control surfaces and the uh, the control horns and the servos on the top. Although I do appreciate why some people don't, why manufacturers don't do that because it doesn't look as pretty because the top of a wing looks really, really pretty with no servo in it. However, practically speaking, it's always better that we have them on the top. Uh, ooh, what have we got in here? We've got some funny tape. I'm not entirely sure what that tape is for. Right, we'll put that to one side. Looks like we've got a nose cone. Anyway, let's just quickly pop this together. Looking around the fuse large, we've got a funny lump. I don't know how long that's going to last on the nose of here. In fact, I'm going to be brutally honest, is that I think that's going to pop off within a flight or two. So they've got skid marks on the front and also on the back, which would be great if I was landing on tarmac. That would definitely make the bottom of the model last longer. And it's the first time I've also seen this funny wire mesh in here. In fact, it's not, it's not wire mesh, it's plastic. Yeah, look at that. How weird is that? So, ah, now I understand is that that's how they've got a whacking, that's a great big air vent in there. And to hide up the gaping hole, which is in the bottom, they've been and put that plastic mesh over the top. I do kind of like that. That's pretty cool, to be honest. Uh, and how do we get in this top? Ah, there we go. Right, what else? What else have we got in here? Oh, oh. Hello, okay. Fuselage is absolutely ginormous. I was literally just reading a thread in a Facebook group for these, this model, literally five minutes ago, uh, and there's quite a lot of debate in these. Some people have loaded these models up with uh, 18650 batteries, which you don't know, if you don't know what 18650s look like, I will grab a box. So instead of using a standard LiPo, is that you can make your own 18650 cells and battery packs. So that's an 18650 cell. Uh, and you will see that we can fit many in that fuselage because it is so huge. Now, obviously, depending upon the center of gravity, we'll need to move them around. Uh, and there are a whole collection of different suggested packs, sizes for this model. Although, from what I can work out and what the recommendations which I've seen, uh, is that it has it does fly better with less weight. Although once you get this up to speed, uh, it does seem to be all right. Now, one curiosity is that I half recognize that. Now that swoop there 
is exactly what we've seen in the Dart XL and what we saw in the original Dart XL from Zo HD. So that moves over and then it flicks. However, unlike the original Dart XL, which came right up, it literally had so much elevation in the rear part of the cord. This one does look a little bit more conservative and I'm quite surprised I didn't notice that. Yeah, look at that, look. So look at the wing cord, it comes in and it really is super extended. However, in the Dart XL, if I remember correctly, it was almost like that on the back. Um, so you literally fly in your model on a, like an attitude like that after time. It, it wasn't very uh, pleasant experience in the in the version one they have been and updated it since and I've not flown the updated version so I can't mention too much on that one but uh, yeah that is yeah you can tell that that wing cord was definitely definitely chosen on purpose so we got a hole there for a servo we got a rear hole here as well that must be the uh, that makes sense so when we put the wings on is that there must be a thumb screw hole just in there inside as well. So let me just grab the ruler a moment. So, so you get an idea on the size of the fuselage is that just going from here to here, we're talking about, uh, we'll say eight and a half, we'll say eight inches length of usable space uh, by approximately four inches, maybe a little bit less here at the back, uh, space at the front. So absolutely tons of storage space. The curiosity is, is that the battery holder is back here uh, for the battery, so that's already telling us this, that the centre of gravity is going to be quite far back here on this model. Uh, looking at the lid, the magnets are put in there nice, uh, already pre-glued. Also, just from a practical point of uh, view, is that I, I am going to go on and use some Yoohoo Pour to put this vertical fin surface in, but it's really nice that then, and I, I've, this is the second time we've seen it because it was the Zoe HD models where I first saw this double sided tape already pre installed for you, so you could just go peel, peel, install, job done. That would be it for that part. I think that's really, that, just from mine and your perspective, I think that's really, really cool. It just makes build times go much faster, although I will sand and I will use some Yuhu pour to glue that in there just because it's my model and that's what I'm going to do to this one. So we'll put that to one side. Uh, the lid, again, we are seeing this this plastic. You've got, I've not seen that and I think that's really, really cool. That's definitely a very simple way of masking uh, a, a very large air input, a uh, very large air intake. Uh, and making it look really, really cool. I think that's quite unique. I've not seen that before. So yeah, thumbs up from there. Uh, looking at the rear of the fuselage, one immediate thing which is springing to mind is that it's really nice that we have this plywood base in there. Although I would have personally liked to have seen some options in here for flight controllers. And I know some of you may be using e an Eagle Tree Vector. Some of you may be using iNav with a whole multitude of different flight controllers. But there's still nothing wrong with uh, pre uh, cutting the holes in there or having some form of platform in there or cage uh, for a flight controller. I think that would have been really, really nice to see uh, and very simple to do because we're only talking about laser cut plywood. That's my only one comment for the back area here. But in reality, what I'm going to be doing in mine is uh, fitting a flight controller up in the back of here and probably just using a 3D printed base and then putting that in and putting mount my flight controller in that way. Uh, that would have been nice to see. Uh, in the back of the model. Right, I tell you what, let's just get this one put together. I, I want to have a look at that nose section as well, but I'm also itching to see what it actually looks like on the workbench when it's put together, if that makes sense. We'll just put it, quickly put it together. Now, I wonder what we've got. Oh, is it only stickers for the leading edges? It might only be stickers, and would that be adequate? And yeah, it would be adequate enough. I, I'm, and what I'm talking about is that normally, or what we have seen, and like I said, one of the topics of controversy about this model was that it was actually designed by an ex-employee of Zoe HD, which made the Dart XL, etc. Uh, is that one of the curiosities was around what they were doing for the leading edges, and it, it does so. They had like a Teflon coated plastic uh, on the leading edge, and that is super strong. And they'd also gone for like a Teflon plastic on the bottom, which I, I. I begrudgingly put it on the bottom of the Dart 250G 
Uh, and actually, the, <laughs> it's held up really, really well. I have been quite impressed by that little add-on. When you got the pack, there were like no instructions for it. And then I saw somebody else had put it on the bottom of their model and had a closer look. Uh, and then actually, I, I thought it was pretty cool. So, and then I put it on the now the more I've been and used it, it has worked out super well. So let's get this thing put together and pop that on there. Uh, so build time, I think realistically, to, well, that's it really. All, I've, all you've really got to do is glue that on there and then you're talking the electronics, which is two servos. Now, I'm gonna be putting some Raystar MG90S servos in my model. I'll put a link to those in the video description. Uh, they are now the better ones than the genuine fake Tower Pro ones. Uh, so I'll put some half decent servos in here, uh, in there. Now, I will be putting Crossfire in mine in the right wing over there. Uh, and I'll put the video transmitter on this side. Uh, and, and there's me talking about, I, I'm already planning what I'm gonna be doing with it. <laughs> so, yeah, it is gonna be curious to see the yaw stability of this model on how well it stays in the sky. Uh, and the reason why I'm so curious, because that is quite a small vertical fin, uh, although we do have a forward swept wing, so that will help with its stability as well. It's definitely very, it's not coming out on the camera that well, you're gonna have to take it from me. That's a big nose on this one. It's not an ugly nose, but it's definitely a big nose. Look at this, that's the size of my hand. It's a fair old size, which we've got up the front of there. So yeah, that is very, very curious. Uh, anyway, sorry, we were talking about the layout of components. Now, one of the nice things which I like on this one for us is, ah, I have just been and spotted the CG mark, so that's happy days. Now, a little tip for you is that if I grab this tin here, is that I've got some, just knit them from the wife's sewing room, uh, just some pins, and what I do with mine is that you've got the center of gravity marks in there, and then you push a pin in, so now you'll see that there's that pin there. And of course, when you're on the flight line and you wanna check your CG, I'll put my hand on, there. there's the pin, and then I'll be able to check CG. You'll be able to check the center of gravity on the model and know instantly whether you're hitting it or not, okay? So yeah, very, very simple tip. Just stick a pin in the middle of the mark, uh, whether you've laminated it or not, uh, and that will definitely help it, make it a lot easier for you longer term when it comes to finding out because you go back to the model a month later and you can't remember where the centre of gravity is and you check underneath, but if you just stuck two pins underneath, which cost literally nothing, uh, is that that just makes life easier. So anyway, getting back to my point, we do have the servo mount to spot in there. I'm guessing we're gonna need to trim a little bit of the foam out at the back of there. That's perfectly normal. I do like that they have considered, let me show you with a screwdriver, how many of you have done this? Because I've got to put my hand up, I've done it. I've put a servo in there and the control horn hasn't been perfectly centered and then by having that little groove just there you can get the screwdriver down just enough to undo the uh, screw on the top of the servo adjust the control horn and put it back in and actually that's oh there you go I was going to say that's the one thing which I haven't seen yet uh, and that's so we've got the control horns in there we've got an antenna uh, cover as well and we have uh, very nicely the clevises on the end which are probably a hex yes uh, we have an allen key or an allen bolt uh, grub screw on the end of there to tighten up so that's really nice and nice touch as well that's not coming out on the camera because of the white of the foam uh, so you'll have to take my word for it on the end of that screw or that end of that bolt there we have a red thread lock on that really small detail but sometimes it's the small details, because imagine, it's, a, it's only a two, two surface model. It's not like we've got an elevator or a rudder to get us home. We literally have two surfaces for up, down, and left and right. So if one of these fell, so seeing red Loctite on there, definitely thumbs up. Getting back to my original point, is that it's nice to see that we have defined bays, maximum separation from each side. And I did see a little bag in here, which I'm really curious on now, what we've got in here. We do have covers for both of those, like so. So I do like that, and of course, just a tiny bit of hot glue would hold that down absolutely fine. Ah, and then those two pieces is the one bit which we haven't looked at properly, which is the nose of the aircraft, and actually, ironically, the butt of the aircraft as well. So let me put these to one side, and uh, we're gonna start with the rear of the model. And now, I know we're, we're all FPV, but I know some of you actually may end up flying this at life, F, uh, line of sight. However, on the back of here, 
standard size motor mount. I'm going to be putting a Sunny Sky X2216 1250kV with an 8x6 propeller because I'm going to be running 4S. If you're going to be running 3S, you'll want a 9x6. Don't worry, like I mentioned about the servos earlier, I'll put all links to all the parts which I'm going to be putting in my Rambler uh, in the video description for you so you can copy the bits which you want to copy, uh, like maybe the powertrain. Uh, and I'll run that with a 40 amp ESC because on eight, uh, because on 4S it takes up to 40 amps for that motor, like maximum current. Uh, and you've always got to be careful of that top current rating on there. So getting back around, we have a spot on the top of the model. Again, if you think about that, if you've got your receiver in one wing, your video transmitter in the other wing, makes sense that we've got our GPS unit away from everything else. And if we've got a flight controller in the back as well, yeah, pretty cool. That lid is really quite nice. And it is a really daft thing. I'm gonna say it's a really daft thing. is because there's a model here. I don't wanna mention which one it is, but there's actually hinges in the wrong way. So you clip it in the back and then it clicks down to the front. The problem with that is that with the, well, the, if you've got it this way round, so it got the key in the front of the nose, is that when that's in the front there, is it doesn't matter how much wind hits this, it's always pushing it down. Uh, and it's not gonna come up or have the potential to come up. I've lost canopies on models before and that's been really, detrimental to me keeping them around. So anyway, let's get back around to this nose section. So we do have a two options by the looks of it when it comes to noses. We've either got this option at the front, so we can put our FPV camera here on the right hand side, uh, and then that looks like for either a session, uh, run cam 3S or GoPro up in the nose. There was a little block of foam which we've got here. I want to see how that works in a moment as well. Oh, it looks like we potentially we could use a run cam. Ah, that's for a run cam 2 uh, in that nose, so that looks like that would fit in there. Or you could block it off and then cut your own with the standard template. And that's a nice touch. My one comment is gonna be that it's quite a big nose, isn't it really? And you're looking all the way down her fuselage at the moment. And I like airflow, and you should like airflow going for a model to keep the components cool, for one. Uh, especially if you're running larger packs or you're making an ultra-fast model. However, you've got to think about the wind resistance hitting on there. M maybe, dare I say, it'd be quite nicer if that nose was slightly more rounded to a point. Although, I do appreciate, and I'm sure you do appreciate, that there's a lot of different cameras which need to be accounted for, uh, and GoPros are not the smallest things on the planet. So, yeah, very curious. Oh, what else did we get in the thing in there? We got the antennas, we got the con control horns, we get some, that's the funny stuff which you, wrap... let me show you. This is the stuff for wrapping up your wires underneath. So that's, you just put your cable inside, wrap your cable, up alternatively in there to keep as a cable tidy. Not entirely sure I'm gonna use that in the build if I'm perfectly honest, but it's a nice touch to have. Probably won't be using it for myself. We'll move that to one side. Uh, we get a couple of screws, which I'm not entirely sure what those are for. Obviously, if we all read the instructions, we'd know exactly where those go. Uh, we do get a collection of these fins. Now, just be aware, these fins do have a plastic covering film on them to keep, ooh, nice and shiny. Don't know if you saw, realize that, saw how shiny that got then. That was quite nice. Uh, and these will go in strategic places around the model. If I remember correctly from the photographs, you have one, two, so let me just put, it's probably the wrong fin. Somebody will shout at me and say it's the wrong fin, uh, but it fits in the old and it'll be fine just to show you right now. So you have some vertical fins on the wing that how much these are going to do is going to be somewhat questionable. You also have a fin placement here in the nose as well. So I like I said, I'm just going to pop these in here for now. They're probably in the wrong holes. It, it, it's okay, I'll swap them over. Ah, so those ones <laughs> definitely go up in there. So which one was definitely the wrong one up there? Also in the vertical stabilizer there. So imagine that's glued in there. Let's just go and grab these from around the desk. So, and we'll just get one side completed. Ah, look, so actually I think I've got that right now. So that really curved one, I suspect goes in the front, yes. So I'll have a side on view now. That does look pretty cool. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure 
how much effect these tiny little fins are going to have, it would be somewhat questionable. Although, for pure aesthetics, do you know what? I think I'm going to stick them in. Just because they look cool, to be fair. Oh, and I've just noticed the moulding. Can you see it says on there? That was unexpected. So they even went to the time to put the Rambler RS in on the nose. Anyway, getting back to my point, we were talking about these fins. Yeah, not entirely sure what they're going to do to the flight characteristics. It would be very marginal. Uh, however, for pure aesthetics, I think they look pretty cool. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments section uh, underneath this video. Howdy, it's Matt from the future and I felt obliged that I need to add this section for you because if you are seriously considering purchasing the Rambler then there are a couple of things which you need to know about. Now, before we get into these, I don't want any of these to detract from the model itself. I just want to stress in the very beginning, these are just things which you would ideally want to know about going in eyes wide open when if you were to go on and purchase one of these. Uh, and they are all relatively easily manageable. So with that said, let's get into these points. So number one is the camera mount, which is a complete oddity, uh, is that if I twist that bit around, and lift up that lid. That funny foam block which which gets in here, there's no instructions about it at all. However, it does fit in really nicely into the nose and it is meant for a run cam too, uh, as far as I can see. Uh, and once you get it in the right place, which it is in there now, uh, it's really obvious that that's where it's supposed to go. Uh, so that was a bit of an oddity. I was fiddling around with it, couldn't work out which way around it was supposed to be. And actually, uh, it, it does, once you get it in the right spot, it does fit in the right place. So that was the curiosity number one. Uh, number two, you may have just seen me using that, is that what I've been and done is take a servo control horn and put a screw into the antenna plastic which I'm not using. So in the kit you get some antenna protectors. Uh, what I've done is chopped off about 10 millimeters off that uh, and then put a tiny screw into a control horn and because that hole's in the wrong place anyway, I've put that in because the magnets in the bottom of the lid are not very good and yeah, so I've made a uh, like a catch on the top of there. I was uh, I was a little bit worried about that lid coming off with that catch on there. Now it's so simple to do. Uh, that's not going to happen at all. So yeah, those magnets weren't great, although they are now clicking down better than what they were earlier this morning. The wiring marks in the wings is if we turn this up and up and over, you will see that there are two lines here is that there's a, a line which goes like so, then across, and then comes out, and then goes across to the bay in the wing. I would strongly suggest that you do not follow their markings on here, and the reason being is because you are following a spar line just there. The main spar, you can probably see it in there, is underneath there, so I'm not sure why you would put intentionally put a cut in your wing right next to the spar, the one bit which has given the entire wing, or, and the back one, uh, rigidity. So what I've done on mine, and you'll notice here, is all I did was get a metal ruler, or in fact it actually was the metal craft knife, and then run the soldering iron along here out to each bay on both the wings. So avoid their suggested markers for wiring because it literally runs right next to a spar. Don't do that. Uh, you're, 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 you're weakening your model, okay, unnecessarily. Instead, if you are going to be using the bays out in the wings, then do it that way instead so you're not intentionally uh, weakening your wings. Actually, while we've got this thing upside down, uh, it did come, oh, and you'll notice that I have laminated my model. I'm treating, uh, even though, yes, this was sent to me as a model to review, I've still treated this as my own model, and as such, it's got laminated because I felt that it, uh, be just because where I fly, in short, there's cow pats, there's sheep poo, okay? Laminate keeps it clean, also makes it tougher. We'll get to that in a moment. It did come with some skids. There were two on the back. There was one on the front. I've already lost the one on the front, to be brutally honest, uh, and I'm not even gonna bother looking for it. I don't think these are gonna last very long. I think they're a bit more of a gimmick. So we turn that one back up the other way around. So camera mate, wiring in the spars. Uh, the foam is exceptionally 
shiny. I think that's just down because the mold is so new. That does mean that when you go to put laminate on top of your model that you may want to put some rubbing alcohol or uh, just to get, just or, or to sand it slightly. I did run over my foam uh, with some 240 grit sandpaper, very, very fine sandpaper, and I'm not talking about scrubbing it. It was a very, very light scrape on top of the foam just to give the laminate something to key to. This is a, I wanna stress, this is not a bad problem, this is a good problem, uh, it just makes the point that the mold is so new the, f the foam is coming out so so shiny uh, so just be aware of that on that one lid magnets we have been and spoken about uh, the elevon surfaces on both of my wings I have reinforced them with some laminate and the reason being I don't know if you can see in there but you should be able to see through the actual Elevon itself. Is the other one a little bit more obvious? Yes. You'll see that there's some cracking going on in there. On both Elevons, both of them showed signs of cracking. One broke away for about that much on the other side. Uh, so with that in mind, very, very simple to remedy. And again, none of these things are rocket science. I'm sure you can all manage these very, very easily. You'll notice that here, if I come on a little bit cl closer, there, there's a slight ridge there. So when I was laminating this model, I did put an extra piece of laminate to create a hinge there. You could, of course, if you're not laminating your model, that's fine. You could just use some sellotape. Ideally, you would want to be using some blendum tape that is the perfect tape uh, for surfaces uh, movable surfaces like that so just be aware of your elevons uh, I, it was just because the, the mold is so tight just there at the moment uh, they, they, they were just too thin and too weak so go really careful of that be fully aware of that with yours elevons ah, no supports now I was genuinely surprised that we ran into this because the designer of this model made the dark Excel. But actually, thinking about it, it was no big surprise that we ran into this because one of the issues which we had with the Dart XL is that there was no support in the nose area at all. And even once I added some laminate, this whole neck nose section stiffened up. So that made a marked improvement. And then one step further is that I have put some four millimeter carbon rods in the nose. They're 25 centimeters long. I've just used some hot glue. It's extremely crude, but also extremely effective. This really has stiffened up the nose. So I would have personally liked to have seen some carbon rods or glass fiber rods down the length for the fuselage because I do feel this nose did require that. I don't want to repeat of previous things which we had, so uh, that's why I've already been in pre-glued in some carbon rods. I will put links to those carbon rods in the video description uh, for you uh, because I definitely do think that is one mod that you will most likely want to do, especially if you're landing in rougher fields or a longer grass and things like that, somewhere where the nose is gonna be put underneath a lot of strain. Again, if you're loading it up with lots and lots of battery. The last one on the list is that I do feel the wingtips are really flexible, uh, and I think that's purely down to having a great big hole in the wing. Easily managed, uh, if you're concerned about this, and I, I will go on to check mine later after a couple of flights, uh, is most likely running a piece of carbon rod across here just to stiffen up these bays uh, with these wing tips because I, I the laminate has definitely made a massive difference. Check your model when it arrives with you. If you feel uncomfortable with that, either put some laminate on there or run a carbon strip across there. One petty remark is that actually I think those bays need to be further back here because those of you which run, say, Crossfire, for example, then you have a great big antenna hanging out the end. Those of you which are putting a VTX in there, typically, typically speaking, you have quite a long pigtail for the antenna to go up as well. So I think those bays, while it's fantastic, they really are out on the edges. Maybe, maybe just in an inch or so over here. Again, that would line up with the wiring mark on here so that you've got some space for your antennas to go out on the wing. So there's a quick retrospective look at the LTE Rambler RS. It is ready for its maiden and I have modified it and that's everything which I've been and changed on it. Besides that, 
really straightforward build. I have put some fancy, it's, it's my little trademark, I have put some chrome laminate on the ender. If you're wondering where I've got that from, it's from Hobby King. Uh, it's just brushed chrome laminate, um, it's 10 quid or so a roll, uh, and I've just done a little stripey effect on there. That's my little trademark for models. Uh, I do like the way which it looks. I need to put my hand up as well. I would have loved to have been and put a Sunny Sky X22 16-1250kV motor. I do have two here, but unfortunately they're underneath the desk on a different model and I've got something else planned for that model to do with an RC car over the weekend. So I've put a wholly, and I mean wholly inappropriate, 1800kV 2836 rocket ship motor on the back. Uh, so whereas everybody else I'm sure which will get would receive this model and set it up with iNav and then make a long range build etc etc et which I will get to, I hasten to add, hands up, guilty as charged. In the interim, I've stuck quite a fast motor on the back of it and we really are going to go and rag its nuts around the sky. So there's a quick update on the Rambler RS, let's get back to previously Matt from yesterday because I have literally just built this one up overnight and this morning uh, and just finished a few bits up. She is here ready for a maiden uh, and it does look, and you've got to admit, it does look pretty cool and it did come with some stickers. I've used a couple of the stickers, I'm not really a stickers person to be honest, uh, but I am going to go and stick those eyes on the front because I think they're really cool. Um, and there. Uh, that's nice when you get to choose where you put stickers on the model rather than having them pre-put on there so you can make your own thing up or not put them on there at all. Anyway, let's wind back in time and I'll see you back at this desk as we're wrapping up. What do I like? I love the moulding. I like the moulding a lot. Uh, I like the depth of the wing cord on here as well. It's not as pronounced as the Dart XL, as many of you know, I didn't really get on with that, that model very well. Anyway, put that to one side. Uh, it is nice to see the depth of the cord. This does mean that even if we overload it, so I'm talking about 1.2 kilos and more, is that I still think it will still fly okay, to be brutally honest, because that wing is so deep. Uh, and this is only supposed to be a one meter wingspan model, but it does fill or I haven't got the same measure. I'll, I'll, if I'm wrong, I'll put it in a bar out in the bottom. Uh, it does feel, and it does look bigger than what I thought it was going to be according to the photos over on Banggood. Foam, really nice. I do. I've can't actually. I'm, I'm here rubbing my fingers. I don't think it's an excessive amount of mold release. I think it's just a brand new mold which the, this, this model's come out of. Hence, it's super, super shiny. Uh, and the foam is of a, I'm not gonna say it's the best, stiffest, strongest EPP I've ever come across, but it is good EPP. I'm there squeezing it away and it's, it's genuinely nice EPP, so good foam half decent components which they've at least included in here. As far as setup goes for mine, uh, I will be going probably for, depends on which camera I've got available, probably either a Foxy Cat 2 in the nose or preferred a Cadillac Rattel in the nose. Now uh, for batteries, uh, just look at the size. Let me grab you a 5200 4S pack so you can see the, the kind of the size available uh, in there. <laughs> if you were to stand those up they and they will go back you could potentially fit two in there although in reality I think I'm only going to fit one in there uh, to be brutally honest so uh, to begin with I'll start off with a 5200 4S pack here in the nose uh, for as far as iNav goes now I'm either going to use the Maytech F411 flight controller firm favourite of mine uh, something else, it really depends what I've got kicking around in my uh, in, in the flight controller box. Uh, but yeah, it'll probably be the Maytech F411 flight controller which goes in here. If Worst case it'll be an F765 Maytech uh, board which I've got, although I do need to save that for a different project. GPS perk, not entirely sure, depends what I've got available. I'll put a link to uh, the two which I would use which will either be the BN220, uh, sorry the 880 which is the larger GPS perk. Uh, or a Pixhawk version as well, which have done fantastically well for me. Uh, and that hole, I have just realised, is the wrong way round. GPS pucks normally have the wiring 
Ah, I am. That is wrong. Right. That hole there needs to be there. Now that's awkward because the wiring on a GPS puck always comes out the back of a GPS. Let me show you. How curious is that? Have I got? Yes. There we go. So this is, I don't know which one it is. Oh, this is the one with the compass on. So this is the Venetian 880, which is the larger GPS unit. Uh, and if I put the wires in there, so you notice the wires come out the back and the orientation of the board is that way round, which then means the plug is at the back. Not that you normally use the magnometer or compass on one of these GPS units. However, that said, it still should be the other way around. So one little whoopsie there, and I mean it's a tiny whoopsie, because I'm just gonna melt a hole in the back and put the cables down the back that way. Uh, but yeah, that hole should be there. And I know, and we both know why it's the wrong way around, is because the rear plate in there, look at the size of the tongue, that there needed to be right up here, and they still might run into a slight issue getting that tongue in underneath that rear hatch. So yeah. One minor bug, that's not bad for a first attempt, is it? We're liking everything else, and oh, look at the overhang on there. That is pretty cool. Anyway, getting back to my point, <laughs> is that probably gonna end up with a Matek flight controller of some form in here. 40 amp ESC mounted here, with the cables going up to a Sunny Sky X2216 1250KV motor, with either an 8x6 for 4S, or 9x6 by 3S. That's, uh, that is plenty enough for this model. You could go lower, those of you which are looking for longer flight times than, well, however long, then we're talking 45 minutes to an hour in the sky as it is just with that powertrain, uh, easily, because that's what we'll get out of a mini Salon, for example. Those of you which are looking for more flight efficiency, Obviously, move to Lion cells, those 18650s which I mentioned a few moments ago, and an alternative motor for the back of this one would be the Sunny Sky X2212 980kV motor. I think it's a 13 turn uh, motor. I've got those on the uh, Olberbird. I've got a pair of them on there. Really, really low current draw, uh, and yeah, with a slightly larger prop. Uh, maybe around about a 9x6, seeing how you get on with it uh, on the back with, for the weight, I hasten to add. Servos, no brainer, Race Star MG90S is in there. Uh, I've got those in the box ready, ready to go for models just like this. Uh, and the only bit which you might need to glue, well, I'm going to glue, is this top section. Uh, and I might, I'm just, I'm just going to use hot glue, I've got to be perfectly honest. So. Build time, really, really low. Video transmitter in one wing, receiver in the opposite wing. If I wasn't gonna go and laminate this, which I brutally am gonna laminate this model, and by the way, if you've never laminated a model before, you don't need to do it. It just keeps models like these cleaner for longer. Uh, and I will put a link in the video description to the series which I put up on YouTube uh, for it. Uh, it is very, very simple to do and I think I might end up laminating this one. We'll see how time goes for the build. Uh, it should be pretty quick though. That said, first impressions on the LT Ram LTE Rambler are very, very good. The only oddity was that hole for the GPS. It needed to be over there. The rest of it, and I'm gonna turn it around to a good side, which is that side with those fins in there, You've got to admit, it looks pretty damn cool. Combine that with the huge fuselage. Very, very curious. Now, before we go any further, you must be aware, we always hold off final judgment, especially on new phone which arrives here at the desk, until we get the model in the sky, and that's a key point. We've had some fantastic models which have looked absolutely corking here on the desk, but the moment we've chucked them in the sky, they've been absolute dogs. I'm not, I would be extremely surprised if this was one of those, but I don't think that, but, uh, but we always hold off final judgment. So if you're interested in the maiden of the LTE Rambler, don't forget to press the red subscribe button and of course press the bell notification so that YouTube notifies you when the next video is out because we could be on the flight line with this model. And by the way, I'll give you a little hint. I'm building, this arrived on a Thursday. I'm gonna get this one quickly built up tonight because on Sunday is a flying day, so we'll get this one out on the flight line and that bell notification could be to let you know that the it's been the maiden of this one and we'll see how she flies. I am very curious. I think just first looks, 
it's going to be a good one. However, like I said, we always hold off final judgment until we get it out in the sky. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down in the comments section underneath this video. Uh, good bad, ugly, let me know what you think. Did I miss something when we were looking at this model? I think I've covered everything on there. Uh, my first reservations about the model being sometimes even I'm getting confused and yeah, my fingers are warmed up now. Yeah, th this is a brand, brand new mold and hence why the foam is ultra shiny uh, and that can be mistaken as being mold released. There is a tiny bit on there, but anyway, minor details in, uh, in the scheme of things. So yeah. Very curious. Let me know what you think of the LT Rambler. That nose section is, let me turn the backer up like that. I've never seen this mesh system before and I gotta admit, I do like it. You always learn something new when you have a new model on a desk. And I like that, I like that a lot. In fact, I am wondering where, where we can get some of that to put it on some other models because I think it's pretty cool. So. On that note, for myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench for the unboxing and first look at the LT Rambler. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to Banggood for allowing us to take a first look at the LT Rambler because I've got to be honest with you, I've been eyeing up this one on the Banggood website since it came out and literally I was chatting to the woman over there uh, about this one and the next thing I knew she'd already stuck it in my orders uh, and it was on the way so happy days it was literally eight days from China to myself here in the UK absolutely brilliant so so with that said I am ultra curious to see how this thing flies watch this space gonna get this thing built up we'll get it onto the flight line we'll give it a damn good chucking and we'll see what happens so on that note for myself Matt as always Cheerios!